today's video, we're going to talk about unlocking the hidden power underneath the SP404 Mark II, utilizing a particular piece of gear, and that is going to be the Fader Fox EC4, I think it's called. Let me just make sure. Uh, yep. All right, we're going to plug this in real quick, give it some power, and then also hook it up via MIDI. Cool. Let's get some headphones going. All right, so uh, we got the Fader Fox running off of a external power device. It needs power via this USB-A, I think it's called, USB-A input. And then we have a 3.5 MIDI out going into the 3.5 MIDI in for the 404 Mark II. And uh, if you can see the screen, ideally, uh, hopefully you can see it well. But basically what we have on the Fader Fox is you have this setup screen, which uh, gives you gives you 16 different uh, folders. So I have one for the Syntac when I had that. Um, today we're going to be focusing, I mean, they got one for Ableton Live down here, you know, uh, gives you all this. So basically the hierarchy goes as follow. We have 16 folders and then in those folders you have 16 groups so let's go to my sp404 folder right here and uh once we go in there this is what it looks like i have a uh, fave one fave two bs12 you can customize this however you want right now it looks the way that it does because i haven't done uh done my spring cleaning for this right now but really this is all that matters uh for this particular video so what this layout looks like is each one of these names corresponds to the 16 different knobs that are on the Fader Fox. And for this particular group, Fave One is what we're calling it, um, I have it laid out as such. The DJ effects, speed, the on and off of the DJ effects, and the length, this controls bus four. And this is kind of what, where this video is, this is kind of why I wanted to make this video. When I say unlocking the hidden features, with the SP404 Mark II. And that is being able to manipulate bus three and four externally. And the reason why that's so cool is, you know, sometimes we might be here, let me, let me play some music real quick. You know, sometimes we might wanna, you know, have this, uh, let's turn it down just a little bit. We might have this plan and, you know, let's say we wanna put like a, we'll just put a phaser on it, right? And then we can have this sample. And let's say for bus two, we wanna have uh, tape echo or whatever, right? So we have both of these things going, but now I wanna also, I wanna do some DJ, some DJ effects looping, right? And, but I can't because right now, bus one and bus two are already being utilized. And where this guy comes in is allow, it allows us to, let me take my headphone off, uh, but where this guy comes in, it allows us to do that. So, you know. So now I'm affecting both of them, right, you know? And, you know, and in, a, and in a nutshell, that's the purpose of this video. And I could stop it right there, but while I have you, I might as well show you at least with this particular folder. I'm not done, you know, um, if you see, you have 16 separate slots that you can fill out. Eventually, you know, I at least have like four, uh, but this is the one that's the most put together. Um, but for the for the 404 in particular, I'll probably have one, two, three, four, those four. These, maybe we'll figure out at a later date. So what else do we have for this folder? For this particular effect, at favorites number two, we have uh, the DJ effects, and then I also have an isolator on bus three, which allows me to kind of, you know, get like a semi master over what's being played. Uh, so whatever beat I'm playing, let's say uh, it wasn't EQ the same as the previous song, then I'll be able to, you know, kind of do some little micro adjustments right here over the whole master mix. So I used to have the EQ on there, but I go back and forth between EQ and ISO for this particular one. We're doing ISO, uh, you know, it's just nice to have, you know. Um, all right, cool. So we got bus three, bus four. These right here are real fun because uh, if I am doing like a live set, these actually trigger pads on bank J. So if I'm over here playing, right? Right? 
And now I can go. Nuts in. Got a couple of effects. And you know, you could use these to trigger whatever pads you want. If you got like your producer name or some DJ drops or some like movie quotes or something that you want to throw in during a set, that's uh, cool to have on hand. As opposed to like switching banks and and having to go back and fiddling around and then going this way. Um, it's just nice to have these. So that's what I have these set up for, which is a beautiful thing to have. Uh, and finally, for this particular uh, group, we have control for bus one. So this is the bus one on and off. So as you can see, bus one on and off. And then we got bus two on and off. And I just put those up there. These were blank for a while, but you know, for the sake of this video, I was like, let's fill these out. And I think it kind of works. So let's say I'm, uh, you know, we'll get the drum going again. And let's say for, so since we're already on bus one, it's not blinking. Let's say I want it to be a phaser. And then, bam. So we got the filter drive. And while I'm messing with this, let's say I wanna turn on bus two's effect while I'm still on bus one's page, you know? That's it's not a fully fleshed out idea, but that's what we got right now. So, you know, um, turn it off, turn it on. What do we got on bus two? Okay. Turn bus one's thing off. Yeah, what do we have for bus one? Yeah. So if I'm on bus two and I'm trying to like figure out what it's supposed to be. Anyway, so hopefully the point of this video got across within my ramblings and fumblings. Uh, and the point is the Fader Fox EC4 paired with the SP404 Mark II. It's just a beast combo, allowing you to manipulate buses three and four while playing on your 404 is uh, a really invaluable workflow or hack to have. Um, <clears throat> but that's all I got for you right now. Uh, yeah, man, have at it, make some cool stuff and See you on the next one. Peace.